engine remanufacturing is on the rise. Snap-on have got products for EV workshops. NCAP Green, Volkswagen's new Amarok, Toyota on ICE engines, driverless buses, CAM box for N47, Intel chips, and motor factors bought out in Northern Ireland. Hello, I'm Paul Callan, and welcome to this week's Motors End News. You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me. Boom in remanufactured engines. Ivor Searles is an engine remanufacturing company in the UK. Some of you might have dealt with them, be familiar with them. They've been around since 1946 and they've had their best, biggest, busiest year ever. They're producing 150 engines per week. So I'm thinking, why are they so busy? And when you drill down into this, what you're discovering is people are not changing their vehicles. People are keeping their vehicles longer. People are choosing to put an engine in as opposed to trade the vehicle in or scrap it. So what does all this mean? This means that as far as uh, work and prosperity for the repair sector for the aftermarket sector these are all really good indicators and I think as the economy starts to decline workshops are going to get busier and this is an example of the type of thing that's happening right now and the information that's coming back right now NCAP you'd have heard of NCAP in terms of the NCAP rating for a vehicle accident in an accident it's the five star NCAP rating well NCAP is now going to have NCAP green and it's going to be an assessment a life cycle assessment of the vehicle so they're going to ex assess what resources goes into building it what it, what energy goes into building it they're going to then look at the the greenhouse gas emissions on that vehicle for its lifetime uh, greenhouse gas emissions and its production then they're also going to look at recycling how much of it is recy recyclable and they're going to work out a, a figure so that when the customer comes to buy a vehicle there's going to be an end cap green figure on the vehicle and this is going to probably become something as the younger generation come on they're going to be looking for this they're going to be asking about this and they're going to be attracted to a vehicle that's got a good end cap crash rating and a good end cap green rating. Volkswagen's Amarok. So kind of, you've got two camps in this one a lot of the time. You've got Amarok fans and you've got Ford Ranger fans. Well, if you're a Amarok fan, your new Amarok, which is gonna be launched soon, uh, is gonna be based on the Ford Ranger. So Amarok's been around since 2010. The second generation is on its way. Uh, based on the Ranger, going to use full Volkswagen engines as far as we can work out, but things like Ford infotainment systems going to be on that vehicle. So again, another example of Volkswagen obviously not wishing to put resources in to build a, a, an Amarok replacement as they did with the Caddy, taking it from the Connect. So I think Volkswagen are putting so much of the resources into EV that they're choosing not to spend money in these sectors. Snap-on are starting to introduce products for electric and hybrid. So they have introduced a new battery lift. So system allowing you to remove the battery on the hybrid or the EV, uh, a platform lift that's gonna allow you to do that. And the same platform lift can be used for, to demount an engine or drivetrain. So it's a very usable device going to come in John Bean, Sun or Hoffman brand so but it will be available through your snap-on dealer so it's something now that you're probably going to see more of coming from your snap-on dealer now as well as the offering for EV and hybrid stuff as we move more down that road. Toyota is spending 383 million dollars on facilities in America to build four cylinder engines um, they've got, they're going to spend 222 million in Huntsville, Alabama. They're going to spend 109 million in Troy, Missouri. They're going to spend 36 million in Jackson, Tennessee, and they're going to spend 16 million in Georgetown, Kentucky. Now, 
you're kind of thinking of this so hold on a second Toyota were really pushing the hybrid then they adopted to EV so what's this all about well what how come they're now ice engine facilities are getting this money spent on it? but when you drill into this story a little bit more Toyota are going to introduce a solid state battery somewhere between now and 2025 and what they've worked out is that it's actually going to be too too expensive to build a full EV vehicle with a solid state battery. So what they're suggesting is that anything that comes with a solid state battery now is going to all come in hybrid form, which means they're going to can make the battery pack smaller, thereby making the solid state battery element less expensive, thereby making the vehicle affordable in the marketplace. So obviously, the technology seems to be coming on stream that's going to allow them to produce a vehicle with solid state batteries. But when they calculate it out, they're saying the customer won't buy this vehicle, so we have to compromise. But I think over time, what you'll find is then as they start to get production ramped up on solid state batteries, you'll see the price come down on solid state batteries. So eventually, in a couple of years, you're probably going to see a full EV solid state battery. But right now, solid state batteries, when Toyota released them, is going to come in a hybrid form. The UK's first full-size autonomous bus takes the roads in Scotland next week. Uh, Stagecoach, Alexander Dennis and Transport Scotland have come together to trial this level four autonomous bus on pre-selected roads in Scotland without having to have a driver intervene, level four. Now, when you look at this, you're thinking, well, hold on a minute, we're hearing that the cars are around level three, and now all of a sudden we're hearing a bus that's at level four. But what this is, it's on a selected road, so it's gonna be on the same road, doing the same journey repeatedly all day. So you can see, yes, it's a more sophisticated level of aut autonomous driving, but it's doing it on a repeated section of road, which is probably easier to manage and control. But they're gonna start trailing that next week over in Scotland. FAI Automotive, the parts manufacturer, they've always, or for a long time now, they've had the timing chain kit for the N47 engines. Uh, one series, two series, three series, four series, X1, X3, X5, from 07 to 15, and Mini M, or, R56 from 10 to 16 and Aris and Avensis and RAV4 from 13 to 18. But now they've also got a cam carrier. So the cam carrier is available from FAI Automotive now as well. So if you've got the full job to be done on one of them N47 engines, you can get the time chain and the cam carrier from FAI Automotive. And also Continental now have got a range of exhaust gas temperature sensors for the full Volkswagen Group and Opel. So might have been a part that you traditionally didn't think of going to your factor for. Oh, well, now you've got it available from your factor in Continental brand. Chip shortage. Uh, the CEO of Intel has come out and said the chip shortage. He doesn't see the chip shortage being revolved, resolved until 2024. So we were previously saying that we're looking at 2023. Now he says the issue is not to do with the manufacturing facilities, but it's to do with the equipment to go into the facilities. They're saying the equipment manufacturers can't produce the equipment fast enough. And another little situation that's occurring is that the older chips, which is predominantly older chips that are used in cars, use a neon gas and that gas comes from U Ukraine. So that's another uh, supply issue in terms of producing those chips as well. So not getting any easier on the chip production front for car manufacturers. Alliance Automotive Group uh, is a group, is the group that bought out JNS mm, parts distributors in the south. Well, they're after buying out a group of motor factors in the north. They're after buying out Mac Autos, which are in Belfast, Carmoney and Malusk. And they're after buying out Antrim Auto Parts, Antrim Auto Parts in Antrim Town and Ballyclare. So again, we're seeing these parts groups, these bigger guys, these bigger players come into the market with Alliance having bought out JNS and now buying out individual factors in the north. Um, I'm meeting people out and about now that are watching our Motors End News and uh, 
it's great. You walk into a workshop and a guy says, yeah, that's interesting what you were talking about. But the next question I ask him is, did you subscribe? And they go, no, I didn't. I said, please lads, will you subscribe? We need to get the numbers up. So like, comment and subscribe, please. And um, hit that bell icon and you'll get a notification as well. But anyone that's watching, please do that for us. Thanks a lot. You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the people.